I'll get the one on the pole. You take care of the one at the wagon. <laughs> I'll run that team off and fix up the Indian sign. Once we were on the plains and we were hungry. We didn't have no bullets, no guns, no nothing. So I took my riata and I roped the buffalo. Right, Kate? Uh huh. Telegraph line's down again. Made you still think the Indians are cutting him? That's right, and this time he wants your expert opinion. You two scouts are right aligned with me to Blue Falls. Two linemen have been working the wire heading this way. Up until the break, they've been tapping in regularly. Seems like the Indians might have gotten them. We should be riding instead of talking, Lieutenant. Hasta la vista, Sonny. Oh, my loose horse is in Indian territory. That doesn't make sense. Pick him up, Toro. Uh, you walk him toward me, Sergeant. I'll do the rest. We'll go on down the line. Pretty horrible, isn't it? You fellas don't get to see a scalpin very often, do you? Was he killed with his spear? No, that's a bullet wound. He was probably on the top of that pole when he was shot. The lance was an afterthought. It's an Indian lance, isn't it? Yes, comes from the Atacata tribe. Every tribe has their own particular style of making weapons. This one even has the owner's sign on it, running elk. No? Yes, yeah, she's big medicine. Second in command of Chief Santiwa. Both dead? Indians? Who else could be so fiendish? To think we have been friends with him. Caray, we could have had our throats slit. Hitch up the horses, Toro. We'll get these poor fellows back to town. Give him a hand, Sergeant. Killers came in on foot. One of them was leading the horses. They probably fired from those rocks up there and then rode away to Blue Falls. They're moccasin prints, aren't they? Yes. Friend of an Apache moccasin. But that doesn't prove that an Apache or even an Indian was wearing them. What are you getting at, kid? They're not a Carol Lance. An Apache moccasin don't fit. The two tribes are bitter enemies. So what? That kind of theory just gets us mixed up. As far as I'm concerned, all Indians have red skin. When I report in, I'll recommend that a punitive detail be sent into the territory. Suit yourself, Lieutenant. You're in charge. Sergeant Toro, give him a hand. Go along. Stay here. Do this. Do that. I think Kit Carson has been with the army too long. I'm in a Sergeant. Carson's the one your man has been waiting for. Who's next? One at a time, please. I'm telling the colonel that the two linesmen were murdered by Arakaras. For the time being, why don't we just say they were murdered until I've had time to look around and find out who actually did do it. It seems to me you're more interested in your redskin friends than your white ones. If the troops attack that Indian village and shoot the wrong people, remember, you're the one who's pointing the finger. Send this right away, miss. Very important. Would you mind waiting till I'm finished, soldier? That'll be two dollars even, sir. Thank you. If you'll excuse me a moment, I have this very important message for the Army. What is it this time? Another wagon load of brass buttons? Hiya, Kit. Some of the boys were telling me you were in town. Harry Betterman, how are you? Can't complain. With all these beef-eating settlers going through here every day, a tin-horned cattle buyer like me can't help but make a living. Lieutenant Mayen, meet Harry Betterman, the happiest man north of the Red River. Please. Same here, Lieutenant. How long you lads staying in town? Depends. Just long enough to clear up this engine trouble, huh? There's no Indian fighter, Harry. Do you think this is the beginning of a new Indian war? Well, it don't make much sense, Kit, but you just can't tell about Indians. Seems to me they just don't like them singing wires you boys been stringing across their territory. No, sir, they just don't like it one bit. 
But I'd just as soon leave go over to the Longhorn Tavern and talk over old times. How about it, lad? Well, I'm on duty, sir. I never read anything in that manual against a good steak. It's your duty to keep fit, isn't it, Lieutenant? <laughs> if anybody's looking for the Army, you'll find them at the Longhorn Tavern. Come on, let's go. Haven't you ever seen a telegraph operator before? Not without whiskers, senorita. Also, these deep, beautiful eyes. If you have a message to send, please state it in less than 25 words and then leave. Chica de mi alma, that would be impossible. To tell you all that is in my heart would take a book of a thousand words. But before I begin to speak, them, tell me something. Where is Kit Carson and Lieutenant Mayen gone? Are you a friend of theirs? Well, of course. I'm El Toro, famous scout. Well, then take this to the lieutenant right away. He's at the Longhorn Tavern. I take it, but before I go, I'd like to know something. Does not that clickety-click, clickety-clack all day long sometimes send your mind from out underneath your lovely head? You have a point there, senor, but after all, it's a job. <laughs> then perhaps you'd get to meet me tonight in the moonlight and listen to my soft, mellow voice as I sing to you canciones de amor. Can cans of what? <laughs> there are songs of love, sung to the rhythm of my heartbeats. On your way, handsome. You call me handsome? Then there's hope for me? Handsome, she says. Obviously a woman of refined tastes. From the colonel. He's alerted a troop to move in as soon as I give the word. You mean as soon as you decide that the Eric Harris are beating the war drums? Well, I have to be sure. El Toro and I will take it right out to the village in the morning. We'll talk to Chief Santiwa. You're not going to take the word of an Indian, are you? Don't be foolish, Lieutenant. What Kit sees in the village will give him the answer. If you don't mind, we'd like to turn in. We want to get an early start. I may not agree with you, Carson, but I must admit you're a man of courage. Don't worry. We'll be back late tomorrow afternoon. If you're not back by 3 o'clock, I'll telegraph the Colonel to send out the troops. Good luck, Kit. Good night. Good night, Harry. Good night. Good night, sir. Kit, I don't like the way the wind is blowing. It brings with it the odor of death. Is there any comfort to you, amigo? You won't be dead by Indians. No? Then what killed those two men today? Lightnings? Rifles. In the hands of white men. So? Read the list, Toro. One, no Indian could resist taking those horses. Two, the Indian horses were shod. No Indian ponies unless recently stolen or ever shod. Three, the killers wore Apache moccasins. But the nearest tribe is 300 miles south. Exactly. You ought to know that Chief Santiwa and his braves are afraid of those singing wires. They wouldn't touch him with a 10-foot pole, let alone cut him. And if Running Elk had killed both those white men, he wouldn't be fool enough to leave his lance behind. Why you do these things with what two eyes I'll never know? Don't lose any sleep worrying about it. Oh, of course not. I'm going to go to bed at once. Buenas noches. Toro. Uh, see? Si? Stay out of trouble, will you? Oh, well, how can I get in trouble when I'm sleeping? That telegraph operator was kind of pretty. You might get to dreaming about her and walk in your sleep. God, I'm busy. There's nothing you don't see. Corazón. Me, 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 me. Me, 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 me. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Mi vida. Stop that yelling out there, you tomcat! I want to get some sleep! She's most puzzling. After all, she did tell me I was handsome. Have you heard anything? I doubt it. But by this time tomorrow, he'll be so dead it won't make any difference. Now, hold on, Betterman. You said those two linemen would be the last. The only way we can start an out-and-out -out war between the soldiers and the Indians is to kill Kit Carson and his friend Indian style. Now, if you two can't do it alone, get a couple of my boys to help you. 
Well, I don't know about Once that. those Indians are out of here, the government will open up the finest grazing land along the whole frontier. With these beef-eating settlers pouring through here, we'll all be rich in a year. Now, uh, you're going to let Kit Carson stand between you and that? We've come this far. We might as well go along. And while you're out uh, hunting tomorrow, you might take a crack in an Indian. Stir him up a little on that side, too. You know, it takes two to make a fight. And we want to be sure that this is a first-class war. Standing in there talking. Are you sure they had our moccasins? See, si, come, I show you. I saw them yesterday by daylight as we drove in, and I saw them here last night plainly by moonlight. What a waste of moonlight on faces such as theirs, when I could have been looking into the soft white features of her I love most in this town. Those are the same princes along the line, Apache. You know, you talk a lot, Toro. But sometimes you do say something. Muchas gracias. I wonder if those are the killers. I'm sure of it. Talking to Harry Betterman. Well, that doesn't mean anything. He knows everybody. Let's go talk to the chief. Don't look now, but there's someone on the top of that hill. Siete de espadas. It would come just at the heat of the day. The road winds around the hill. It's an ambush. It won't come till we get to the top. This is what we'll do. They'll be coming around that trail in a few minutes. Don't fire till they're close. Hunting on injured land. Not good. Maybe the chief will go up to have a look and leave the kid behind. Come. Too bad. Kid's going with him. Let's keep them in sight. into the ambush. Help you better hurry up or Kit will finish the fight himself. Spotted pony take you to wake you up. Oh.
Причем? Я видел. Вы что? Ладно, ну быстро. Mother in Chihuahua, when she hear of this, she will say a prayer for you. Stay right where you are. Ah, the friend of the Apache. It's a good thing you do not speak either the English or the Spanish, Chico, because I would have nothing to tell you but bad news. Looks like you've set up a hunting camp, Chief. Had any luck? No luck. Game, not plenty. Let's have a look at the patient. Maybe your son took him to the village. Too far. Smiling Scott hurt too much. Yeah. El Toro was faking, Chief. He's taking your son to town as a hostage. The army wants you out of here for killing those white men. Carson is being paid to trick you. His tongue wags faster than a rattlesnake's tail. Pay no attention, Chief. You have been friends to us, mountain man. But there is much we know savvy. Santiwa's son gone. Some place bad medicine. If you're smart, Chief, you'll tie him up and let me go after El Toro and your son. Chief Santiwa, make sure. You both prisoner till son come back. Cate! He's lying, Chief. Your son was never in on any deal of mine. You both stay until boy come back. In his stuff. <laughs> yes, indeed, Sorrow. A nice day's work. If I could only be sure of Carson. The three to one. Huh? I doubt if he was alive by the time the Indians got there to help him. Well, that's a risk we'll have to take. I'll ride into town and build a fire under the lieutenant. The army should be riding out about the same time the chief calls out his tribe to avenge the death of his son. What about him? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. A sad case. Well, he'll be found in one of the lonely canyons tortured to death by the Indians. A little noose of slow death tight around his throat. Here we go. We stole it. Why did you do it? Here we go. Here Mountain man. It's been told. All my people ride look for sign. Something's been worrying me, Chief. Running Elk's lance was found in the body of a murdered white man. How did he get there? Running Elk made gift of lance to laughing cattle buyer. Harry Batterman? Oh. That's all I wanted to know. I'm sorry, Chief, but I have to leave for your own sake. Throw away that rifle. Stay where you are. Monster, the creeping lizard who eats of carrion. Don't struggle too much, mister. You're liable to choke. <coughs> Any word from Carson? An hour overdue. I was talking to a trapper who just come through Indian territory. He managed to avoid a war party that had a couple of white captives. From his description, they sounded like Carson and El Toro. That does it. I'm sending the message.
Carson, we've given you up. Yeah, what are you doing? Saving you and the Colonel from disgrace. Those white men were killed in order to start an Indian war. Have you heard from El Toro? No, Mr. Betterman said you two have been taken captive. Where is Betterman? He was outside a few minutes ago. Somebody's kidnapped El Toro and the chief's son. If that boy is harmed, we'll have an Indian war that no one will be able to stop. Believe me, this is all going so fast. Betterman has a place just out of town. Now, there's a chance he might have taken the boy there for a deal of his own. Get me some guns and meet me back here in three minutes. Sorrow! Sorrow! That Indian kid, we gotta get rid of him. Carson's on my tail and I think he knows what's up. We'll get them as they ride up. dropping yours. mistakes. It's never a mistake when you do what you have to do. Oh, son, do you are much happy. Mountain man saves son. We find happy man in canyon. Is he all right? Oh, my braves take him to doctor in village. Good. Oh. Let's clean up things here first. The Army owes you many thanks, gentlemen, and so do I. Glad to help. Just hope we're as lucky on our next assignment. Even money, you're looking for the telegraph office. Oh, kid, I have to send the telegraph to my mother in Guadalajara. Sometimes she worries about... Morrow, you know there's no line to Guadalajara. Bye, Lieutenant. Have you all? 